In this video I'm going to show you a free way to create your own first person shooter game. This will be a very basic two part tutorial but I will have more detailed downloads, links and discussions at my forum which you can find here. I'm going to begin by teaching you basic level design and player and enemy placement. The program we're going to be using is called Reality Factory and it's free. You can find it at realityfactory.info. Just click on the downloads and main installer link from the main menu to download it. Be sure to also download the update or else this won't work properly. Once you have it downloaded and installed, go to Start, Programs, Reality Factory, Tools, RF Edit Pro. When the interface launches, you'll notice four default views, 3D, Top, Front, and Side. You can navigate around these views using the scroller button for the top, front, and side views and by clicking and dragging in the 3D view. You can also click on the camera button to pan around the stationary views as well. To add a room, make sure the templates tab is chosen and click on the cube or any other shape that you want the room to be in and hit enter on your keyboard. This will add a hollow cube to the views with a strange looking texture in the 3D view. To change this texture, click on the Modify Brushes button at the top and click on the square in any of the views until it is highlighted green. Then click on the Textures tab, select the texture that you want and hit Enter. To change the texture for the individual walls, with the cube still highlighted green, hit the Page Down button on your keyboard. The highlight should change from green to pink. Then click on one of the walls and double click on a texture for it. You may have to hit the refresh button at the top to see the changes. Now select the next wall and add a new texture to it. Repeat this until all the walls are changed. If you want to change the shape of the box, hit the page down key again and then zoom out in the top view and then click on the scale button at the top. Then drag the sides of the cube to move them. I'm going to make mine a rectangle. Now let's add a second room. Click on the Templates tab again, click on the cube and hit Enter. Next click on the Modify Brush button and in the top view select the cube that we just added. Then click on the Move Brush button and move it to just above our rectangle so that the outer edges line up perfectly. You may have to zoom in to make sure that they're perfectly aligned or else the game may error out. Then you can use the Scale Brush button to change its size as well. Next we need to add a door, so click on the Templates tab again and select another cube. But before hitting Enter, on the right hand side click on the Customize Template button and change the style to solid and check the Cut Brush box and hit Enter. Now click on the Modify Brush button and using the different views you can shape it to the size of a door and move it so that it's parallel with the floor. You can use the 3D view to preview what it will look like. Repeat this for as many rooms as you want. Now it's time to add a player and an enemy to the game. For the player, click on the Templates tab and select Player Setup from the Entities drop down menu. Then click anywhere on your 3D view and hit Enter. You should see a little red Player Setup box appear. Now select Player Start from the drop down menu and click on where you want your player to start and hit Enter. Lastly, let's add an enemy. So from the drop down menu select Pawn and in a 3D view select on where you want your enemy to be and hit enter. Next click on the Modify Brushes button and select the red non-player box that we just added from the 3D view. It should turn Aqua. This should list its attributes to the right side of the screen. You want to change the Pawn type to Robot, the script name to Robot.S, the spawn order to spawn with a capital S and SZ entity name to robot. All you have to do now is click on the build button at the top to compile it. Check the box that says preview in reality factory and click OK. The control buttons are the same as they are for most first person shooters using the number keys for weapons, the WASD keys and the mouse for movement and F1 and F2 for views. In my next video, we'll go over more detailed level design, lighting, adding a level escape, pawn creation, and packaging it for distribution. For links to game resources, examples, 
helpful websites and discussions on the topic, visit my dedicated forum topic regarding this video. Feel free to check out Tinkernut.com on Facebook and Twitter. Alright, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to Tinkernut.com.